Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So in June 2020, uh, AMD hardware is finally compatible with nesting. I was out of the loop so I didn't really know. But today I decided to give it a go, see how it runs and confirm. And wow, I'm actually impressed. Just like back in the day, back when when I got my Ryzen, I was kind of sad because I could not run nesting and it was one of the main reasons why I, I wanted a Ryzen because it was the cheapest option with uh, a lot of cores, you know, a 416 thread and stuff. I was between the i9 or the Ryzen. The Ryzen is cheaper and uh, IPC is decent enough. So yeah, that, that ought to do the job and then Ran a couple of VMs, installed Windows Server, tried to install Hyper-V, didn't work. I was like, bro, there, there must be something wrong on my end, probably. A VMX file that I probably forgot to set up accordingly. So I looked up on the internet, and turns out AMD was not compatible with, um, with nesting, which was a surprise to me because I, I, I assumed it would work. That's why I didn't even do any research because one would expect it to work, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's only fair to assume it would work, but it did not work. And I was very annoyed. It made me very sad to the point I just... Because it's one of the things that I like to do. I like to mess around with Hyper-V. I don't have a spare machine to run Windows Server on, so I have to virtualize it. And the only way I could do that, you know, mess around with Hyper-V would be via VMs due to that very same reason. So not being able to do so kind of was like, you know, disappointing. And that would also mean KVM was a no-go, for instance. So it was goodbye to nesting in general. And I loved messing around with VM exceptions. You know, like KVM on top of Debian, on top of VMware Workstation, and so on. Uh, but the fact is, it finally works. That's the whole point. So we're here with Windows Server 2022 data center. It's the latest build 2298. Came like came out three days ago. Run that. So here's Hyper-V, Freon. The machines I was trying out with, it wasn't working. Apparently, Generation 2 doesn't really boot. I'm still about to figure out why. Because I don't know, but generation one works just fine. I've just installed Debian and it runs like a charm. Let me just make sure that, uh, yeah, the MIDI is fine. Just making sure. So, um, as you can see, no tricks. AMD hardware, not joking. See, virtual machine performance Ryzen 3. 700x 16 games for this vm and there you have it finally after a long storm we finally have nesting which is very important as much as it seems like something dull like why would you want to actually nest like why but twice the effort on your machine to run you know a vm like what's the point I mean, there's a lot of purposes for that. Might seem dumb, but deep inside, there's a lot of actual applications for nesting. And as I mentioned, as I wanted to get better at Hyper-V, and uh, I didn't really want to, you know, like wipe my Windows 10 and install Windows Server instead. Because like, I know there's Hyper-V on Windows 10, but it's not as cool. It's like, you know, like Hyper-V just... You know, it's um, uh, I just find it odd using it on Windows 10. I would much rather use VMware Workstation. It's just I don't know, perhaps just me, but I mean, for for home use, I would much rather use uh VMware. Generally, I prefer VMware. So there's that. I mean, uh, Hyper-V has a lot of limitations, but I want to brush up my skills. And like, if I use Hyper-V on top of my Windows 10, that would mean VMware would not work properly. Like some features would not actually work like nesting. So even if, you know, if it were Intel, so you, you lose that cap capability once you, once you um, install Hyper-V on, on the same machine. So that was an issue that I didn't really want to run through. So 
Yeah, as you can see, no tricks. That's VMware. I just got to virtualize Intel, VTX, CPT, AMD, V, RVI, and virtualize counters. That's optional. That's just, the, the only one that counts is the VTX, CPT, AMD, V. I want to do that. You just proceed normally as you would on bare metal. And there you go. You have nesting on AMD finally. As you can see, it's fully functional. It's, it's great to finally have it. I know I'm a little late because I didn't know, but I looked over on YouTube. Apparently, no one made much of a fuss of that because then again, it's something very specific. It's not like everyone's like, oh my God, I'm, I won't buy AMD because it cannot nest. But for some people, it can be useful. Like if you want to do a like bunch of crazy stuff with ESXi and Windows Server combined or ESXi and Linux VMs running KVM and you know, there's so many things that you can actually do, mainly for training, not so for production environments, not much of a production thing. Then again, it wouldn't be running Horizon on production. And so that, that, that doesn't even, it's not even part of the point, but yeah. So it's a really, really short video just to demonstrate that it actually works and it's really, really easy to do. There's nothing on your end you got to do other than enabling the option on VMware, if you're using VMware, that is, if you use different uh, uh, software, then, well, it, it could be slightly different. I'm a little out of the loop when it comes to, like, virtual box and stuff like that. Hello. You know, I'm just mainly just VMware-centered as of right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, make sure to try it for yourself, you know, because it's really fun. Nesting is really fun. As much as it seems weird, VMception is quite cool. Just imagine the thought of it. Like KVM on top of Debian, which is actually running on Hyper-V on Windows Server 2022, which is running on VMware Workstation, which is running on Windows 10. Like who would have imagined like 15 years ago that, can, that you could actually run a machine within a machine within a machine. I mean, the virtual machine concept's not really recent per se. I mean, VMware and um, hypervisors in general are not really that new. It's something that exists for a long time already, but the sole concept of actually having a virtual machine running within a virtual machine is kind of, you know, so far-fetched back in the day, and now we can actually do it more than once, actually. You can just keep stacking them on top of each other. It's just crazy. As long as you got the RAM for it, CPU for it, I mean, why not, you know? But yeah, that's about it for today. Uh, really, really quick morning video, as you can tell, I'm very tired. But yeah, feedback's much appreciated. Comment, se comment section is right down below. Y'all have a great one. Goodbye.